Our next guest is, as I said earlier, a prima donna, a great operatic star. She's going to start with a song from the Auburn, Dame Kire Tikanawa. <laughs> for asking me. That was nice and short, anyway. <laughs> what, what, what was that? Well, it was a funny little song, and it, it really means on the short side of it. Um, unlucky is the man who doesn't have a wife, and equally unlucky is the man who does have a wife. <laughs> Shrewd thinking by the Auvergnois, I would have thought. <laughs> what, uh, now that you've sung this Auvergnois was, song yeah. <laughs> in your own inimitable style, Kiri Tekanawa, what, what, illustrate it for me, what does it mean? Tekanawa to Kiri? In the Queen's, King's oh, English. Ah, it's all very difficult. I don't know, they, people tell me out in New Zealand it call, it's Bell for Kiri and Tekanawa was a chief. But, um, I don't know, I'd really like to get to the bottom of it. You don't seem very well versed in the old Maori tongue. Well, you Kiri. see, no, well, I, well I, I really should avoid all those questions because I think I'm not very good at all that. Because mm. I was brought up on the sort of white side and, and I, I'm a little ashamed that I didn't learn a little bit more about my, well, my sure. maori dom. I'm sure you're not ashamed at all. I'm sure they're very proud of you. How's your golf? It's <laughs> <laughs> a bad day. Whose show is this? <laughs> and look, just, just are you sure you're Kiri Takano with the opera singer? Yes. What? This has been playing today too. It's not very good. Oh. It's misty. Well, it is well to keep track of what your husband is doing, isn't it? <laughs> the Maori blood, how much is that? The Maoris are a great singing nation. It's obviously played its part in developing you. <laughs> You know. Well, I think the Maori people, because, the, you know, it's a really sort of very close-knit community, very much like, I put it akin to the Welsh people, if I dare, because we're sort of from that sort of background. I remember down in Greymouth, where my mother was, there was the mining field down there, and they would all get together, and they'd all sing, or they'd all have brass bands. It's really rather beautiful, that was sort of for the joy of for the joy of living, or, or because there was nothing else to do? I think, really, there was, you know, not, there was not television, and in some ways, it was a very beautiful time for people to live because you got to know each other and you made your own entertainment. You didn't have television to just switch on and, and say, well, dare I watch this or I don't want to. You know, sometimes there's a lot of rubbish on television, I mean, isn't there? <laughs> very rarely on a Saturday night at 9.20. But it's true, I, I, and I really loved it when I was young and I grew up and I had this wonderful, wonderful time singing and making theatre with my friends and but my parents. coming from a singing nation, how did you manage to, to stand out, apart from your talent? How, how, who encouraged that? Who brought oh, you gosh, forward? Oh, gosh, it's such a long story. Um, my mother did... It's a very long show. I know that, but, you know, I, I, 
the, the, when you, where you start and where you get to, where, you know, where, where I did start and where I, I'm, I am now, there's such a long gap. And, you know, it's just a, a day after day after day working. And suddenly you arrive that you, you've done all these wonderful and exciting things. And I'm still having such a fantastic time. I think, gosh, you know, Mum really was right. She did all the marvellous things for me. She encouraged me. She pushed me into competitions. And she did all these, these things. And I really, I think I sacrificed an awful lot of my uh, so-called growing up where if I was in, um, in a, an exam at school, I was immediately pulled out because the singing teacher had reign over, over everything else in the school because her choir came first. And it always brought the school up, you see, with the, the choir and the performances and things for concerts and charities and raising funds for you know, some of the so hospitals. So you never got an education? Exactly. Not really, no. I think I, I, I did miss out quite a lot. You made a sensational debut at, at Covent Garden, didn't you, when you were a slip of a girl? Did it change it all for you then? Did you see the lights? <clears throat> you knew you were going to make no, it? No, not at that point. I think when I, when I did sort of do my first performance, I thought really I was the greatest. I really thought I was... I was flying high. I think I was on cloud 10. I missed cloud 9 and got up to 10. And I was really sort of buzzing there for a while. And then I, um, I just sort of calmed down and started working with my teacher. And, and she sort of brought me back down to earth. And now I've worked. You know, a lot. Do you have singing lessons at all, Terry? Uh, no, I, I, I you, don't. You, you sing a little, though. I mean, oh. That voice, you know, it's so. Oh precious. yes, yes. I, I've had, I've had my share of success, of course. <laughs> but, but, didn't you record a song or something like that? Oh yes, it was. How does it go? It was an old song of the Auvergne. Oh yes. really, the Auvergne? Slightly longer than your offering. I'm sorry, I cut it short for you, but I thought that's what you'd like. I loved it. Yeah, well, I loved it. I was merely joshing. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, yeah. now I feel, I feel guilty. I should have done ten. But then you wouldn't have liked it ten times longer. Well, no, been a bit, that would have been 20 minutes long, Kiri. But, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you have any extra notes that you'd <clears throat> care to throw in at this juncture, they'd still be very welcome, you know. I think you should sing a song. Yeah. Hang on, your accompanist's gone home. What? So, well, <laughs> there's no prospect of that. We're delighted to see you. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much, you. Kerry. Thank you. Engaging and charming, Dame Kiri Tikalawa.